thank you so much for coming here. My name is Tom Nelson. Uh, I'm with Extra Group. Uh, I'm one of the four principal owner and developers of this beautiful project. Uh, myself, along with my partners Jim and Rob Stolpestad and Herb Towsley with Exeter, and our hotel development partner Nelson Development, uh, want to welcome you to something we've envisioned all along, which is having uh, a groundbreaking grand opening in this gorgeous historic lobby uh, of what used to be the United States Post Office and Custom House, but will soon be Custom House. Uh, a couple of misnomers, this is a groundbreaking effort, or a groundbreaking ceremony. We've actually been under construction for six months already, and please do not break anything. Uh, this gorgeous and enormous building is on the National Register of Historic Places, uh, so um, the watchful eyes of the National Park Service and the State Historic Preservation Office are upon us, so please be careful if you are lucky enough to hold a golden shovel later on. Uh, we're going to have uh, a few remarks, um, but I just uh, what we're really most excited about today is that um, uh, this thing is actually happening. Uh, this gorgeous building was built uh, in three phases, 1934, 1939, and 1961. It's 748,000 square feet, um, and it at one time uh, had three eight-hour shifts running around the clock, employing 6,000 people in the project. When we bought it, it was completely empty. Uh, but now, uh, you can hear it behind you, on any day we've got up to 200 uh, construction workers that are building uh, what we hope are best in class 202 market rate apartments on floors 6 through 17. We've got a 149 unit Hyatt Place Hotel that our partners Nelson Development uh, are building. We're going to have the first ever self-storage facility, Lower Town Self-Storage, in the back portion of the project. We're hoping the space behind us is a beautiful restaurant, um, and we have parking in the lower levels as well. So not a small task, uh, but we've had a, a great team of people working on it. And uh, one, of those, one of those teams that's been very helpful is Nelson Development, uh, who are here building the Hyatt Place, and they've enlisted LodgeWorks, uh, LodgeWorks to manage the hotel. LodgeWorks is what I call a, a quiet giant in the industry. Uh, they're actually involved in 2.2 billion of hotel development and management throughout the country and throughout the world. Uh, we have Greg Epp, their chief operating officer from LodgeWorks, who's here to tell you a little bit about their plans for the high place. Thank you, Tom. Thanks, everybody, for. My name is Greg Epp. I'm uh, with LodgeWorks. We're out of Wichita, Kansas. That's our home base. I'd like to introduce to you as well Blaze Brigman. He's our Vice President of Operations. He lives uh, he's local to the area, so he'll, be, he'll keep a close eye on the property. And, and uh, we're very excited about this opportunity, obviously. Uh, LodgeWorks specializes in uh, select service hotels. Uh, we've been in the business at LodgeWorks for over 15 years managing mostly a lot of Hyatt product, uh, a lot of our own products. So this is a good opportunity for us, obviously. Um, right now we have eight Hyatt properties open around the country that we're managing. So this one's a little unique with the structure and with uh, everything going on, but it's, it, uh, it's gonna be a good challenge for us and, and we'll look to integrate ourselves into the lower town area. Um, our philosophy, is to place the guests and associates in the forefront of our thinking. So we want them to feel one of us, one with, we want our guests to feel welcome, uh, our associates to feel welcome, and a service uh, delivery is our key to performance. Um, we also believe in a family character in our organization, and we try to, we'll try to integrate ourselves into the community, uh, help where we can, and be, uh, be helpful for those around us. Uh, Hyatt Place is, is a really good fit for this area. It's going to have a contemporary style and innovations that'll, that'll uh, be unique. It'll allow the, just, the guests to enjoy some customized experiences in the hotel. And uh, it's actually going to be a great fit in this historic building and be quite beautiful, I think. We, we took a tour this morning. It's really going to be impressive. Um, I'd like to 
I tell you one last time, I feel fortunate that Mike Nelson and Nelson, De Nelson Development allowed us to, to participate in the project. We're looking forward to the opportunity and, and uh, we can't wait till it's open actually. Thank you. Thank you. I know the mayor would love to get up there and talk, but I need to delay him a little bit. Uh, I'm going to tell you a little more about the history. Not a lot, because you, I could go on for a couple hours. But this is an interesting building because it's an example of political bipartisanship. That sounds strange, doesn't it? But in, in reality, the Republicans back in the 20s got this project going. The Democrats in the 30s got it done. How's that for political bipartisanship? The person who actually thought of the idea was a man named Charles Moose. He was a postmaster appointed in 1921. He was the campaign manager for Senator uh, Kellogg, the guy who's named after the street out here. Frank Kellogg, who's from St. Paul, became Secretary of State, won the Nobel Peace Prize. Quite a quite a figure. But then the, in 1926, there was a law passed called the uh, Public Buildings Act of 1926. That provided the, the, the funding authority for the building. And it wasn't until 1929 that the first funds were actually uh, appropriated by Congress. $2.7 million, which doesn't sound like a lot of money, but in our, our dollars today, that's about $37 million. But the, the project, for one reason or another, never got going until 1932. This is the groundbreaking from 1932. Charles Moose is the guy with the shovel. This guy here is Carl uh, Schooneman. For some of the old-time St. Paulites in the room, you probably remember there was a Schooneman department store. That's that guy there. And the fella in the middle is uh, very lovering the contractor who had the first bit of work on the project. So originally the building was only going to be six stories high. By the time they dedicated it, Congress had incorporated some more money and the building went up to 13 stories. In 1939, as not indicated, four more stories were added. And in the 1961, this annex in the back with six stories was added at that time. So the building has been around for 80 years. During that 80 year time frame, St. Paul has had 16 mayors. The longest serving was George Latimer. Many of us in this room know George. And many of us consider him the, probably the best mayor the city's ever had. So does so he. <laughs> So George served for 14 years from 1976 to 1990. But I, I have to say, there is another mayor that's rapidly catching up to George in both longevity and accomplishment. My good friend over here, Mayor Chris Cohen. Thank you. Well, first of all, uh, the connection to Schooneman's is uh, Council Member Bostrom used to sell shoes at Schooneman's department store in downtown St. Paul many, many years ago. Uh, we also have Council Member Thune here with us and, and glad to have them. Uh, Jim mentioned that this was a bipartisan effort uh, to, uh, to get this building done. That's how you know it's eligible for the historic register because it was the last time there was bipartisanship in this country, it seems like about 50 or 60 years ago. Uh, so we're just happy to be here. I look at this as a, I call this a reclamation, uh, an affirmation, and a celebration. A reclamation, obviously, of this incredibly uh, beautiful, historic Art Deco building. Uh, we have some great Art Deco facilities, obviously the City Hall, uh, one of the finest Art Deco buildings in the entire country. One of the, uh, I see Russ Stark is also there. Russ, thank you, Council President Stark. Uh, it, you know, the, the, this beautiful, you know, history that we have maintained so well in the city of St. Paul. Uh, so to reclaim a building like this, to be able to bring it back to life, uh, to have it, you know, there, there were many, many years that the workers that were here uh, provided for their families and they had good jobs here. 
uh, but when those uh, when the post office's needs changed uh, and those jobs still in the region but went to a different part of the region uh, this building was not an easy one to think about you know you, you talked about the challenge looking out at this building the, these are not easy projects to reclaim uh, but you do it because it is an important part of the historic fabric of our city uh, it's an affirmation because as Jim has mentioned on, on, a, on a number of occasions but for the work that we have done over this last decade to build the light rail line, to build the ballpark that will open up next week, uh, to do all of the things that we have done, uh, this project would not be moving forward. So it affirms that the track that we're on in the city of St. Paul is a right one. And ultimately it's a celebration of all that we have done and the distance that we have come. One of the reasons we do have historic structures in the city of St. Paul was quite frankly, there wasn't a lot of pressure to tear them down. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is there, wasn't a, there weren't a lot of folks that were thinking, boy, how can I go spend a lot of money in downtown St. Paul? But there was a vision that was created, and, and a lot of that was when George was mayor, uh, and working with the McKnight Foundation, getting resources into the, the Lower Town Redevelopment Fund, creating a vision and a plan for how we could reclaim uh, this, this part of town, but doing it in a way that honored its historic nature, uh, to bring in the artist community, and Dave Thune was really involved in that early on. Uh, to, to, to say, you know what, we're going to bring artists in, but we're going to do it in a way that doesn't just have it, you know, the artists come in, turn an area into a cool area, and then we kick them out because they can't afford to live there, but to embed the arts community into Lower Town uh, was an incredibly important strategy of what we're doing. So then when you get to the ballpark and you see that the ballpark has incorporated some artwork uh, as, a, as a part of the structure that uh, it helps us bring full circle. Uh, so this is an exciting project, and I really, I really believe that when, when it is uh, open, up uh, next year when the hotel, you know, you said that you're ex excited for the hotel to open. Uh, that's another affirmation that there are actually visitors that want to come to St. Paul and participate in, in, in what's happening here and go to the Jazz Fest and go to go to some of the events that were, you know, whether someday the Wild are going to win the Stanley Cup. I just know it. I don't, I don't know. I thought it was going to be this year, but uh, the fact of the matter is there are just so many wonderful things here today. So we reclaim this building, we affirm the work that we're doing, and we celebrate how far St. Paul has come. I just say congratulations.